So this video is going to be the least exciting video you've ever seen of anyone climbing Big Red. And the story goes back to 2017 when I crossed the desert with two stock standard cars, a Havar H9 and a Great Wall Steed and a couple of other friends. And we came to Big Red. So I thought I'd show you how it is possible to climb it slowly and without drama. <laughs> Now the key to the ascent is as you may expect tyre pressures and we used 9 psi to climb Big Red and about 15 for the rest of the desert. So here we go, the Havals up first as you can see we are right at the base, we're in low range, second low and not exactly going fast, just pretty much idling up and there's not a huge amount of difficulty yeah, it's not the hottest day, and that's true, but um, we are really not using momentum, and that was a standing start, low range, second gear. And you can see that we're really not having any trouble. Now, I'm kind of going to run out of things to say, so I thought I'd talk a bit about tyre pressures at this point. So here I'm showing the contact patch, which is the part of the tyre touching the ground at 40 psi. Now, if we reduce the pressure to 30 psi, you can see it gets a little bit bigger. We reduce it again to 20 psi and it gets bigger again. 15 psi and it gets bigger, but notice the gap between 20 and 15 is larger than the gap between 40 and 30, despite the fact we're only reducing it by 5 psi, whereas 40 to 30 is of course 10. Now if we go from 15 to 10, that's an even bigger gap again. So let's take a look at what that means. Well, if we take 20 psi as kind of a reference, because that's typically what people air down to going across the Simpson, that's what 20 psi looks relative to the rest. So 20 psi gives us a bigger contact patch than 40 and 30, but not super dramatically. But there's a big difference between 20 and 10. And if we take 40 as the base contact patch, the 20 psi is 25% larger than the base, whereas the 10 psi is 75% larger than the base. So every psi you go below about 20 psi starts to make a big difference. So difference between 20 and 15 much greater than difference between 40 and 30 as an example. And that's represented on this graph here as you can see. The more you drop the pressures, the greater the contact patch length becomes and also width and therefore area and the easier a time you have on your sand dunes. So how does that work exactly? Well, let's take two tyres at 25 psi and 10 psi on a hard surface. That's kind of what they look like. But if we put them into sand, this is what they look like. They might kind of almost be touching the same area, but the 10 psi actually has a much greater area of sand supporting it than the 25 psi. And that's kind of the key to drawing in sand. It's more about the re reduction in rolling resistance than it is about the increase in traction. Now you could say well those cars are fairly light. Uh, well they're actually both pretty close to their GVM. They're also both absolutely stock standard. That steed you see is 170 milligram clearance only, relatively small diameter tyres and yet it's doing it no trouble at all. So the real key in sand driving and particularly in deserts is just lower those tyre pressures don't try and drive these things at 25 psi or even 20 lower the pressures have an easier life driving up the dunes and it's easier on the environment as well now does that mean you should never use momentum no of course not so here i am driving the steed and i'm in low range again using a bit of momentum but not too much the car's not bouncing around all over the place you see i'm not going absolutely crazy yet there's enough momentum over the top just lift off and it's done no need to go crazy throwing the car up at the dunes now if you're still able to hear me say this then you've got to the end and you're clearly not asleep. So how about looking at my other clips channel where I have this video which is literally nothing but this nose cam on a car for one hour driving across the Simpson Desert to give you an idea of what it's like and at no point ever does anyone say awesome. So if that doesn't send you to sleep, nothing will. Oh, and by the way, I do have another video on sand driving principles, which I think covers everything you're going to need to know about how to drive in sand. 